let's ask the question. What was it like across Europe during the last decades of the 19th century, when the bubble was expanding, before it ultimately burst? Well, to answer that, let's use my all-time favorite title, A Nervous Splendor. Actually, the full title is A Nervous Splendor, Vienna, 1888-1889, published in 1980 by Frederick Morton. The book describes two years in the life of glittering Vienna towards the end of the Romantic era. It examines many significant persons, geniuses really, who lived there. Vienna was the home of the waltz, the masked ball, and Sacher Tort. It was also a microcosm of change, a cultural hothouse filled with the people whose ideas would sweep away the Romantic era. People like psychologist Sigmund Freud, painter Gustav Klimt, writer Arthur Schnitzler, and composers Johannes Brahms, Gustav Mahler, Richard Strauss, and Arnold Schoenberg. Now, you may not know all of these names, but each was important in shaping the culture of the late 19th century, and Morton's book considers at the opposite end the staid but powerful old emperor Franz Joseph, who seemingly grasped little of what the future was about to bring. Well, Vienna indeed was splendid. The medieval walls of the city had been demolished, for better or worse, to make way for a new boulevard called the Ring Street. The Ringstrasse was an unprecedented building project that resulted in a row of buildings with massive, intimidating facades. These buildings were intended to convey power, splendor, and progress, shaking themselves of the old rickety structures of history. The Ringstrasse marked the highest achievement in the architectural revival of the High Renaissance. Unlike the beguiling Art Deco or Jugendstil that adorned slightly later buildings of the period, the facades of the Ringstrasse had a different message, power and permanence. Nothing would shake up this republic. Life in Vienna was marked by splendor, balls, elegant coffee shops and restaurants, luxury stores, endless state ceremonies for foreign dignitaries, trendy writers, and fashion, fashion, fashion. So that's the splendid part. The nervous part is something else. People who gave serious thought to society and the world knew that the status quo was in danger. The aristocracy was broke in most countries, mortgaged to the hilt. In many countries, particularly places like Russia, Masses of people from the countryside had inundated the cities looking for jobs. These people were demanding decent living conditions. Poverty, child labor, and disease were rising. Political squabbles threatened to escalate. The great leaders, who had ensured peace through diplomacy like Otto von Bismarck, were in short supply. And so, people were nervous and searching for a way to understand it all. And that's where the artists came in although their message was not comforting. Artists, especially German and Austrian painters, forecast in their canvases what would ultimately be the horrors that beset Europe once World War I broke out in 1914. The most revealing artistic movement is called Expressionism. Probably the best motto for Expressionism was the Scream, an image the Norwegian artist Edvard Munch repeatedly returned to from 1893 until 1910, crafting it in paintings and woodcuts. Today, we are tempted to view the scream as kitsch. You can even buy these things. But, in fact, the wordless horror of Monk's image spoke truth to the generation that would live through World War I and emerge into a world depression.